Good morning. If you could stand and turn towards the back of the church. Blessed today uh, to be celebrating a wedding within the context of our Sunday Mass, which is certainly a blessing for us and their family uh, arrived here.
God will get through this uh, in time. I've changed the batteries, we checked the things, so be patient. And Amen. Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Was for the church shares your. That is certainly the question. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? We know not the hour, we know not the day, but we want to be ready. Amen? Amen. We prepare ourselves by again humbly admitting our sins. We'll sing in the psalm that we should be fearful of the Lord, not to be afraid of the Lord, but to be ready to be judged by Him, to be in awe of Him and His goodness. And so let us humbly admit our sins as we stand in the presence of God this day. Lord Jesus, who came as our merciful Savior, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our advocate and guide, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come as our judge, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Grant us, we pray, Lord God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord.
Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home your children like olive plants around your table blessed are those who fear the Lord the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay sober and alert. The word of the Lord.
I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much fruit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to a third, one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the man who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. Then to the one who had received two talents, he also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share in your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take this talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a great joy to gather with Claudia and tell us for they've been waiting for this day for a long time and we're grateful to the friends who are joining us here in the church and others who are joining us across the world via live stream. Got to say how good looking their 
sons are today, right? Moses, stand up. Let folks see this beautiful tuxedo. Spin around. Spin around, Moses. Spin around. Spin around. Okay. You got your moment. Irene, come on. Irene. We're used to seeing him in jeans. Look at this guy. Come on, looking good, right? Got the fresh. Fists ran off somewhere. And, and fresh in from Pittsburgh, the man whose outfits never disappoint. Welcome back, King Espoir. You, you, you got to get close to him later on because he got a, his, his shirts glowing in the dark, lighting up. Brian, it's something you would have on there with your light up mask. Tell us more. What are you going to do with this? So the story is told about a, a, a guy who was in a hot and uh, accidentally he hit the cup of water that was on his tray and it, it fell onto the ground, spilling the water on the ground. He, he was worried about someone possibly tripping on the water and so he went out to the hallway to the nurse, the nurse's aide, to ask for some towels or a mop so that he could clean it up, so that no one would get hurt. He gets out to the nurse's station. What the patient didn't know is that there was this very uh, in-depth labor agreement in the hospital for who cleaned up spills. And so the nurse's aide looks at it and says, well, that's a pretty spill. I need to call the maintenance folks. And so she calls the maintenance man, and he arrives with his bucket and his mop, and he looks at it and says, oh, no. You're supposed to only call me when it's a big spill. That's a small spill, you are supposed to clean that up. And she says, oh no, a small spill would be done with a paper towel. That needs a mop, that's why I called you. And they go back and forth and back and forth. And the patient leans over to the table next to his bed and he gets his pitcher of water and he pours it out on the floor. And he said, is that enough water to decide who's gonna clean it up, right? Now friends, I share that story because how often does that unfold in our lives? It's not my job, it must be your job. It might be in our house, it might be at school, it might be at work, it might be in our church, it might be in our city, it might be across our nation, and certainly even across our world. This idea that, well, I don't have to be responsible for that. I don't have to fix that. And we wait for someone else to do it. We expect someone else to do it. And all the while, our God is saying to us, would you, would you please do something? Amen, church? Tell someone next to you, God wants you to do something. Tell someone else, God wants you to do something. Our gospel that Deacon Bill just proclaimed for us comes to us at this end of the liturgical year. Last week we heard the story of the ten bridesmaids. And remember, five of them had enough oil and five of them didn't. Which meant that five of them got into the banquet and five of them got locked out. Right? Next week we're going to hear the story of the sheep and the goats, Matthew 25, that were judged on how we cared for the least, for the poorest, for the most vulnerable. That beautiful line, you did it to me. And at the end, we'll be separated. And in the midst of it, we have this story of the talents, which again makes very clear as biblically based Christians that at the end of our lives, we are going to be judged. We're going to be judged by our God on how we live our lives and that our God wants us to be doing something. Amen, church? I said, amen, church. Again, sorry for this microphone saga. The devil's always trying to get in something, amen? We hear the story of talents, and we start to think about the way that we use talents, right? Kenny's got a talent for playing the piano, right? Esquire's got a talent for dancing. You should see it, it's quite a thing, right? You might not know this, but Deacon Bill has a talent for juggling. Right? He can juggle basketballs, chainsaws, things that are on fire, you name it, right? All sorts of talents that are out there. But that's not what Jesus means by the word talent here. 
It's not his purpose. In the ancient world, in the first century, talent actually means 20 years worth of a salary. 20 years worth of salary is one talent. So when Jesus invests in this man five talents, in fact, he's giving him a hundred years wages. The guy to whom he gives two talents, he's investing 40 years wages. And even this one who's only getting one talent, he's getting 20 years wages. This is a lot of money, church. Amen? Anyone interested in receiving 50 or, or, or five talents, right? 100 years wages, right? The guy's going on a trip and he's told, take care of this. And when I come back, Let's see what you can give me. It's clear that there's an expectation. It's clear that he wants to see something on the return. Just like the five bridesmaids who knew that they had to have enough oil to wait for the bridegroom. So these folks know that when the master returns, they're going to have to give an accounting for the way they've used the talents. And we're told the master goes off and he comes back. And just like this, we don't know when he's coming back, which is why... You need to be ready, church. Amen? <laughs> Tell the person next to you, you better be ready. And you better be doing something. Right, and so when the master returns, the guy with five comes up, says, you gave me five, I made five, here you are. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Your reward will be great. The one who made two, <clears throat> comes set with the one who had two, comes forward. I made four. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Right? You've done something. Your reward will be great. And the other guy steps forward. Well, you gave me one, and I returned to you one. I returned to you exactly what you gave me, which means I did nothing. Not some, but nothing. And that's why Jesus looks at this man and says, You wicked, lazy servant. Does anyone want to hear that from the Lord on the Day of Judgment? Anyone? I can't take this thing cutting in and out. I'm going to go back up here, right? Not one of us wants to be told by the Lord, you wicked, lazy servant. It's just not what we want to happen. And yet, why does it happen? Because the man did nothing. He did absolutely nothing. And again, it's a violation of the Lord who says to him, you know that I'm demanding. You know that I scatter and, and sow seeds, and that I can reap a harvest, and yet you did nothing. Friends, he's thrown out into the darkness. He's thrown out into the fires of hell because instead of doing something, he did nothing. Words that we do not want to hear, church. Amen? Go ahead, Chris. This is a picture of my mom and dad and I 20-some years ago. My mom has that gentle, kind smile on her face. My dad has that look of, why are you making me take a picture? I'd rather be doing something else right now. As I prepared for this Sunday and thought about this gospel, my mind went back to an incident with my dad when I was probably 13 or 14. Like most 13 or 14 year olds, I was spending my Saturday afternoon doing what I did best laying on the couch and watching TV, right? Who enjoys a Saturday afternoon on the couch with the TV? Come on, right? And I'm sure that when my dad, when he went off that morning, had given me a list of things that he wanted me to do, clean the garage, rake leaves, cut the lawn, all sorts of stuff. But when he walked in, there I was, probably watching the World Wrestling Federation, you know? And he walked in and he said, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. And he went, uh-huh. And he goes, what about those things? Now remember, I told you last week I was the vice president of the Procrastinators Club of America, right? So I said, oh, I'm going to get to that. And he goes, uh-huh, I hear that all the time. Those rake leaves are not going to get raked by themselves. That garage is not going to get cleaned by itself. And he's getting, his voice is going up and up and up. And he's getting more and more upset. And I'm just laying on the couch thinking, man, you're getting in the way of me watching Mr. Fi Fuji and Mr. Saito take on Andre the Giant, you know? I said, why are you getting so upset? I didn't do anything.
And he looked at me and said, exactly. You didn't do anything. And friends, I didn't like hearing that from my earthly father. And I can be sure to tell you that when the day comes, I do not want to hear it from my heavenly father either. Amen? Amen. Tell the person next to you, you better do something. <laughs> in our first reading today, in our first reading today, the, the, the woman of virtue is extolled in Proverbs chapter 31. This woman who is attentive to the needs of her husband and her children. This woman who is attentive to the needs of the poor. This woman who does amazing things as she sits with the fabric at the thing. She's like, it's extolling the goodness of good women. And friends, how blessed are we to be surrounded by so many good women today. Right? A round of applause for these awesome women in the church today. Right? At the end of the Proverbs reading, right, there's this great line that it says, you know, even at the city gate, the people talk about her goodness. Because usually at the city gate, what are they doing? Gossip, complaining. Oh, look at them. They got a new donkey cart. They think they're all that, right? right? But no, this woman is so good. She's so good that they even talk about her at the city gate. And friends, why is she so good? Because in the wisdom literature, she realized the investment that God made in her. She realized the way that God has poured himself into her. And so she's doing something, something in her marriage, something with her children, something with the poor, something with her, with her handiwork. She's always moving forward because she realizes what God has poured into her and God expects her to do something. Amen, church? Amen. She's a model for us. Again, the Proverbs offer these little lines to, to urge us on, to encourage us, so that when the hour comes, we will be found ready because we want to be found ready. Amen, church? across the back of the church are these beautiful images of these African-American saints and blesseds to be. And I think sometimes when we think about the saints, we get caught up in that they did so much. But really when you look at their lives, very, very few, if any of them, did everything. But they all did something. The church holds them up to us because in the midst of difficult circumstances where they found themselves, they chose to not simply do nothing, but they did something. Mother Mary Lang, in her little neighborhood in Baltimore, or as they say, Baltimore, she gathered up kids who weren't going to school. And she taught them the catechism and taught them about God's love and taught them Bible stories and with the Bible taught them to read. In her lifetime, very few people knew that she even existed outside of her neighborhood in Baltimore. But in her neighborhood, she did something. Pierre Toussaint is a free man in New York City. He was earning a great living as a hairdresser. And again, there were many challenges to poor folks, and especially folks who were receiving their freedom in New York City. He knew he couldn't solve everything, and so he took some of his money and he paid the tuition for young black children to go to school. Did he do everything? No. But he did something. Father Tolton, the first identifiable African-American priest in the United States, he was pulled in so many directions. Everyone wanted a piece of this guy across the country. Every community, including here in Philadelphia, were writing him letters, please come and serve here. But he knew he couldn't do that. And so he served his parish in the south side of Chicago, St. Monica's, 80, 90 families. He did what he could. He did something. We talked about Julie Greeley last week, pulling her little red wagon. When she had extra groceries, she gave them away. Did she solve the hunger of everyone in Denver? No, but she did do something. Sister Thea Bowman, probably the, the most well-known of all these folks who we celebrate, because she had a modern audience with TV and, and, and videos and, and radio interviews. 
But when she was interviewed, she said her heart always belonged back in her fourth grade classroom in Biloxi, Mississippi, where she wanted to teach kids. She wanted to do something. And Andre Delil, again, gathering up young children who didn't have an education down in New Orleans and doing what she could. They didn't solve all the problems, but they did something. Friends, we can't bury our talents. We can't bury what God has invested in us. Because in truth, God has invested in us something far more valuable than a hundred years salary. Far more valuable than five talents. Because God has invested in us the life of his own son. Amen, church? Oh, that doesn't sound very exciting. I said God invests in you the life of his own son. Amen? Amen. Give God a round of applause for his generosity. We rejoice in how generous God is. We delight in how generous God is. As God pours himself into us and then says, you can't bury it, you can't do nothing, you must do something. Every single one of us, I realize as COVID numbers go up and as the political nonsense increases, we can all get to that place where we just want to sit back and do nothing. We want to withdraw. It's a normal feeling. But is it acceptable in the sight of our God? Okay, one person answers. <laughs> we want to pull back and do nothing. Is it acceptable in the sight of our God? No. no. Because God wants us to do something. He wants us to do something. As parents get the difficult news that kids are going to be home again. What? <laughs> He's over here giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> Elbow that kid of yours. Right? Parents get overwhelmed. Can you call someone? Can you reach out? Can you drop off dinner? To some parent with kids who's just feeling worn out, can you just call and listen to them? Right? We've got the pregnancy home, Guiding Star, down in Germantown. Those women who are facing unplanned pregnancy, they're there because they're alone. They don't have a family support system. Could you do something? Be a cheerleader for them? Be a, a number to call just so they can vent? Maybe take them out when that's possible? Do something? As you probably saw, Philadelphia hit a new record this week. 400 murders. A four-year-old shot in our city this week. Four-year-old. Who's going to do something? We all sit back. We're like the, 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 the janitor and, and the nurse's aide. Someone needs to do something. <laughs> Is God putting it on your heart? Is God putting it on your heart? Food distribution continues. Arlene needs more help with over at uh, uh, New Covenant. Uh, needs are there. Loading trucks, loading boxes up at Aid for Friends. Again, folks sit back and say, oh, it's great that we're doing that. Are you doing something? Again, we can't do everything. But if we all do something, then everything gets taken care of. Amen, church? Amen. God is going to come. Deacon Bill will preside at a funeral this Wednesday for a woman. There's no connection with our parish, but we were asked to host the funeral. 39 years old. Died suddenly on Friday. He's an attorney in our city, originally from New York City, came here to accept a pretty big job and was climbing the ladder. Not sure how she passed away, just didn't wake up. Died in her sleep. If she went to church somewhere last Sunday, she, she heard these scriptures about, you don't know the hour. Friends, it's real. It's real. We don't know the hour. Tell the person next to you, you don't know when he's coming. But you better be ready. You got to be ready, church. You got to be ready. Because when he comes, these are the words we want to hear. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. There's a story told about a, a NASA astronaut who after he'd gone to space, got involved in the administration of NASA and rose to the ranks. 
And then eventually he left and, and went to work for an airline that was having great difficulties. And his first week at his new office down in Houston, he was there and uh, walking around visiting people. And he walked into an office and there was a guy who obviously didn't recognize him as the new boss. He's sitting there in his chair with his feet up on the desk relaxing. And the phone is ringing. And the new boss says, are you going to answer that? And he says, no. He says, can I ask you why you're not going to answer that? He says, well, this isn't my department. I'm just here to pick something up. And he says, well, could you answer it? He goes, didn't you hear me? I don't work here. I work in a different department. And the new boss looked at him and said, not anymore. We got to do something. There's so much to be done. We look to God and we say, God, what are you going to do? God, how are you going to fix this? And God looks back at us and says, just like always, I'm waiting for you to do something. Amen. Amen. My mic being a little wonky, I'm gonna. Don't want this to uh, not make it over the thing. Claudia and Telesphor, could you please come forward? Father Deo Gracias, you're there? Okay, very good. So we're uh, doing something wonderfully with technology here. Back a little bit. Come forward. Uh, Father Deo Gracias is a priest that I've met recently who's originally from Rwanda, uh, like Claudia and Telesphor. And then once I made the introduction, we found out that Father Deo Gracias actually once served in uh, Telesphor's hometown uh, village uh, in Rwanda. And so it was a beautiful uh, reconnection for them. He's now studying out in Chicago. And so uh, he is joining us today so that uh, they can recite their vows uh, in their own original language. And so just give me a second here. So I'm going to speak in English, and then uh, Father will recite this in uh, Ranyankole, right? In Rwanda. Dear friends, you have come together in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Through a special sacrament, Christ now enriches and strengthens those consecrated by baptism, that you may be faithful to each other forever and assume the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, we ask you to state your intentions. Claudia and Telesphor, have you come into, here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, 
to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. Are you prepared to continue to accept children lovingly from God and raise those God has given you according to the law of Christ and his church? And so, since it is your intention, I invite you to join your hands. You're going to go first. I, Telesphore, take you, Claudia. Yewe Tesfo Muhaimana Nemeko Uwe Claudia Ingavire Umbera Umugore Kaningu Cesar Nijeko Nazago Hemuchira Mumivero Yachiose Ari Mumahoro Kyangwa Mumakuba Wa Muzima Kyangurwa Kurianza Gukunda Kaninza Kubaha Itenga Yose Kujaza Gupa. And now Claudia will make her vows to tell us for Jewe Claudia Nemeko Teresfor and Bermudavo. Claudia and tell us for you have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord receive your consent and fill you both with his blessings. For what God has joined together, let no one separate. We pray, may the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Okay, Father. Yes. Yeah. Claudia. Akira imetamwambitse. Nikimenyetso cy'urukundo dusezeranye n'ubudahemuka dusezeranye ku izina ry'Imana data na mwana na roho mutagatifu Tell us for you can take off your mask, and if she takes off her mask, you can give her a kiss to seal the love of marriage.
true children. Their daughter here, Amy, turned her head to that side when they kissed, and, and Moses covered his eyes. So, we'll explain some things to the two of you later, right? At this moment, as is the custom here in many weddings, first off, Father Deo Gracias, thank you so much. We look forward to your uh, visiting us in Philadelphia when uh, time allows. Please come. I will. Thank you. Continue to round of applause for Father Deo Gracias. At this time, uh, again, through the wonders of YouTube, we're going to hear uh, in their language a beautiful song to Mary that's going to be sung. And uh, Talis Four and Claudia can visit the statue of the Blessed Mother and spend a moment in prayer. Chris, go ahead. for our newly married couple. And friends, I invite you to stand as we turn and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, we are confident as we turn to the Lord, asking for his help, mindful of his need for us to do something. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all Christians. Lord God, help us recognize you in the poor, the hungry, the vulnerable, and the overwhelmed we encounter this week. Give us the grace to respond and do something for you and through you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation during this difficult political season. Lord, extend your hand of blessing. Grant wisdom and humility to those in elected office. Allow our fragile democracy to be preserved for the good of the generations to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are studying for the priesthood at St. Charles Seminary. Lord God, help them be faithful to your call of service to the church. And may the generosity of this parish lead them to gratitude and humility. Call men who are worthy disciples to the priesthood, Father God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. We pray for the victims of sexual abuse and harassment. Loving Father, be present to them in their suffering and pain. Bring healing to their memories and allow them to see others brought to justice for their actions. Please, Lord, continue to purify our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Marie Claudia and Telespor, now united in the sacrament of marriage. Guide them all the days, their days, O Lord, and bless them and their families with the choices of graces and blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially George House, Ahmad Williams, Kelly Wren, Sheena Williams, Paul Gowans, those having treatments this week and all who are affected by with COVID. Lord God, extend your hand of comfort and healing that they may praise your goodness. We pray for the dead, especially Frederick and Francis Sturm, Lois Sylvester, Bob Polinski, Amber Racine, Ellen Jones, Sister Mary Carmelita, and those whose names are recorded in our Book of Life. Bring them all to paradise with you and all the saints, O God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
we pause and bring to God the prayers we carry in our heart, especially our prayers of thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we praise you for the many ways you invest in us. Give us the grace we need to see what needs to be done and this week to do something. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you join us in worship, we remind you of the many ways to support our parish financially. And we remain grateful for your goodness. Please join us in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Christ our Lord, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fountain of all Make holy their beliefs, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to him. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Lord. Until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with Raymond and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. found worthy of the coming of the kingdom using the words that Jesus taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ.
This is Jesus. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite all those worshiping from home to join me in praying this prayer to make a spiritual communion so that you too may share in the graces of the most blessed sacrament as you worship via live stream. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fiery light when my nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. When I'm all alone, hand is there at home. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you're the center of the simple things in life You're the music in the battles and the streams The voices of all children My family and my home You're the source and finish church we know there's lots of things that try to get to the center though they try to push Jesus out fear anxiety distractions we got to make the choice 
that they will not be at the center, but Jesus will be at the center. Amen? And I know we like sitting there listening to the choir and to Chris and other folks singing, but sometimes we've got to put the words on our own lips as well. So Kenny, I'm just going to ask we do the refrain one more time because I think the church needs to be singing it as a prayer that Jesus will be the center of my joy. Every voice, every voice. stand in prayer. We have partaken of the gifts of this mystery, and we humbly implore you, Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Always grateful for those who can uh, help wipe down the pews today after Mass. Many hands makes for light work, so thank you for that. Thank you for the overwhelming number of uh, grocery bags that are brought for Thanksgiving. Uh, right after Mass, we'll have some folks wheel the carts and carry extra bags down. Arlene will be down in the food cupboard and we'll start getting all that sorted. If you know someone who would benefit from the gift of a turkey and uh, some a bat box of food at Thanksgiving, please do call the rectory so that we can uh, share that blessing with them because we can't do nothing. We need to do our book of life remains here. If you want to write the names of your deceased relatives, we'll certainly uh, record that. Remind you as uh, COVID numbers do go up, testing is available in our parking lot. At this point, it's Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday from uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. No, I'm sorry, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m and then on Saturdays from 8 to 4. Uh, this, Thursday, this past Thursday and Saturday, uh, they had over 200 people, which was just amazing uh, to see. They're gonna try to add a Monday as well uh, in, in the mix uh, because they're getting a great turnaround. It's about a 48 hour uh, response, which is great. So again, the earlier we can get to know it, the more we can wipe this out. The city will be announcing this week some further shutdowns and restrictions. This time around, we are not going to stop mass uh, we'll continue to gather for worship uh, because we need our lord we need our sacraments and so but i just ask you to be precautious if you're around someone who's exposed stay home worship online uh, continue to uh, sanitize your hands continue to wear the face coverings fully and, and let's be uh, appropriate so we can get through this with some good news with that vaccine that's available that is ethical and so please god we, we move forward as we approach thanksgiving there's some papers in the back in the open area there uh, some orange papers you can write what you're thankful for and leave it in the basket that's been sent out electronically as well you know in this time of trial in this time of difficulty we have to fight off that idea that things are so bad and count our blessings and name our blessings and realize how blessed, how blessed, how blessed we are. Amen? Amen. And speaking of blessings, again, congratulations to Claudia and tell us for a great joy to be with you today for this momentous occasion. And uh, just such a blessing to have your family and friends with you today from far and wide and, and just may... Many, many blessings continue to fall 
upon you uh, in the days and weeks to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our good God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us, please join us for our closing hymn, God be with you.